So all that anybody knows about Uganda mm-hmm. is the LRA, the, the Lord's Resistance Army, mm-hmm. and Joseph Coin, mm-hmm. who most people know as Joseph Coin. Coin. Oh, it's Coin. Coin, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so anytime you think about atrocities in Uganda, mm-hmm. you think Joseph Coney. Yeah. But the the truth is, Joseph Coney committed atrocities himself. Yes. And the Ugandan military, mm-hmm. under the president Yoweri Museveni, mm-hmm. who's been in power since '86, mm-hmm. has been in power for almost thirty three years. Three uh, decades. Yeah, over three decades, he committed major atrocities in northern Uganda. Mm-hmm. Uh, villages, man, just wiped out with. You know, basically attrition, like starving the people. Yeah, yeah. You know, there was massacres by the military mm-hmm. also, but there was like really like they were starving the people. Wow. So a lot of people don't know it, and that's why the film is important. A brilliant genocide know. is so smart the yeah. way it was done. It yeah. is brilliant because yeah. you can't tell that it was a genocide because yeah. they made it happen. It's not really like. In the open, yeah. you know, there's not like, you're not going out there like in Rwanda where people are being massacred with machetes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's not a lot of blood being spilled on the street, mm-hmm. you know. Even though those happen in the villages, yeah. The those the major man that was I, I I had no idea and I was blown away because you know the video was packed with so much details and information, and you know, plus the event. You know, the fact that they had you and um, the Professor Milton mm-hmm. and, you know, the other people over there, it's like yeah, a, it a great combination. Yeah, Helen you know? Epstein and yeah. uh, Judy River, both of them, they're authors. Yeah. Helen is also a professor, you oh, know, okay. um, and Judy River is a journalist. So, mm. yeah. The, she's a journalist from Canada, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, hopefully, because I, I think, you know, she, she probably speaks French. Yeah, she does. Yeah, it would, does. Be, would be great to, to, to have it. I think you should. What, what, you, what, should. you should do you know, the podcast with her. Because w- w- what, is up, you know, what is happening in, um, like especially my community, cause of, because of a, a lot of our people, they like mm-hmm. French speaking, mm-hmm. you know, like some of the information, they, they're not getting it quite. Right, right. You know. I wish, man, I would love to do it in French, but yeah. it would take twice as much time. <laughs> no, because but it's I have cool to do my thinking uh, in a different language and translate. Uh, yeah, a, a lot of people really, you know, like it's one of the 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 one of the most listened episode that mm-hmm. you know we had. So far. the one that we did, the one on Rwanda, you know, because it, it, anytime you know people would tell me like you know like they. Because, you know, we have to be honest. Kagami has a great PR system. Oh, yeah. Right. Absolutely. Do you see, we the film is called A Brilliant Genocide. Yeah. I think, I would say, Kagame is, is brilliant mm-hmm. at PR. He yeah. spends a lot of money on, on PR, on yeah. promoting his image. Yeah. He wants to keep a perfect image. That's his biggest struggle. Yeah. If he was the type that was like really good at PR, mm-hmm. but didn't try to maintain a perfect image, mm-hmm. he'd probably get away with all these crimes because he also committed a brilliant genocide. Yeah. Um, it wasn't so brilliant. Mm-hmm. Be- you know, the reason why he's getting away with it right now is because he's still a darling of Western countries. Yeah. And the countries love him. Mm -hmm. Um, The donor nations love him. The U.S. backs him. The U.K. backs him. Mm -hmm. Now he's in good graces with France. Mm -hmm. Um, But the day that he loses the support, Mm -hmm. and it's slowly coming. Yeah. um, You know, his his narrative is getting shattered, you know, day by day. The truth is slowly coming out. It's going to come down crashing because, you know, uh, uh, I saw you, you know, you you posted, uh, like, few people that he had to free because of you know external pressure yeah yeah and i think that's that's good it's good that hopefully they could still run against him even though i don't know if they're gonna win but yeah. i think it's gonna shake things up like at mm-hmm. least he would understand that you know people would anytime they'll get any chance they get they will kick him out so like it would make mm-hmm. them understand that and he will calm down on the, some of that, you know, atrocity. Yeah. So 
the, the, one of the things that I probably I should have said that I didn't say, mm-hmm. I didn't, I, I should have said and didn't say in that event because mm-hmm. it just escaped me. Yeah. And even the day before, mm-hmm. uh, when when I was on uh, Straight Talk Africa, the yeah, the, yeah. the show, mm-hmm. Rwanda is a country that's it does not have rule of law. It has rule by law, which is what dictators do. It's oh. like a perfect. It's the playbook, the mm-hmm. classic playbook by dictators. They they take these laws, they make laws to protect themselves yeah. and to protect their dictatorship. Uh-huh. So you do whatever little thing that you do, it comes back to haunt you and they make it look legal mm-hmm. in the same way that, you know, when, when slavery happened, mm-hmm. it was legal yeah. to do that because they had laws to allow yeah, get, yeah, to do that. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, so... So that's what he has. So one of the ladies mm-hmm. that was freed because of ex- external pressure, uh-huh. according to Rwandan laws, mm-hmm. she couldn't run again because she served so much time. She was convicted for... When you serve a certain amount of um, jail months, uh-huh. yeah, jail time, mm-hmm. then you cannot run for presidency. Mm-hmm. The second lady... That, that's Victoire mm-hmm. in Gavide. Yeah, yeah. Um, Diane Guigara... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. she might be able to run because um, she was cleared of her charges. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, twice. Mm-hmm. This is two times when uh, Kagame's PR has really, really failed. Because, oh. you know, uh, when sh- he released Victoire, uh-huh. he was expecting that people would just um, jump and say, oh, Kagame is such a great forgiving person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he let her out. But they, you know, it was quickly, you know, we were able to demonstrate, hey, this guy, he's under external pressure. That's why he did it. So that one flopped. Then he, um, they they dropped the charges against Diane. Uh And the thing they don't get is, you should have never arrested these two ladies to begin with. They should have never served any time to begin with. So when he released Diane, then he started, they started claiming that the judicial system Mm -hmm. in Rwanda works and is is oh. independent yeah, yeah. and obviously that's also not true yeah yeah but, but that's what's happening and I, I should have mentioned for sure that it's rule by law not yeah. rule of law I, well, I, I think also what I think was great about you know uh, you know some of the interventions especially like when you when they ask you to tell your story of you know about you know being a, a survivor of the genocide survivor you make sure people understood that, you know, there were atrocity, you know, like people committed atrocity, mm-hmm. but that don't make all African savages. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, I think that, that's important. Yeah. Because <laughs> you have people like, like like I said, look the things Museveni has done, uh-huh. what uh, Joseph Kony has done, mm-hmm. what Kagame has done, yeah. what Kabila has done, yeah. what, you know, uh, Compaore is done. Yeah. You know, Isena Bre, mm-hmm. you know, and Idris right. Debi and Meles Zenawi and all yeah. of these, you know, African either dictators or warlords. Yeah. They've committed atrocities mm-hmm. because they are extremists. They are yeah. so power hungry. They will do anything to yeah, either yeah, take yeah. power mm-hmm. and to maintain themselves in power. Yeah. Uh, but that doesn't represent us. Most Africans are collateral damage. Yeah. Um, you know, um, they just, you know, happen to be innocent bystanders and get killed in the crossfire. Yeah, it's, 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 it's amazing how, you know, the, like yesterday, I mean, the, the, the day of the event, uh, Milton, the Professor Milton was explaining how uh, Museveni had, no, I'm not sure if it was him or the the the, the other professor. Uh, Helen. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure about mm-hmm. her name. But she was given details how uh, the, the Mussolini wasn't uh, involved in like attacks in like Sudan and all the neighboring countries. Yeah, yeah and, that's true. And that's how they usually use you know like those puppets, right? Like mm-hmm. even you know. In Burkina Kampari, like you know, we've heard stories that you know, like he was involved in a lot of countries, yeah, Liberia, you know, like Sierra Leone, even Ivory Coast, yeah, Ivory Coast, like, yeah. Like, it's, it's just 
these people they're not only a danger to their own people, but mm -hmm. there's a danger to the world. Because yeah. if what's what's funny is I feel like the West, you know, I, I'm pretty sure they know that these people they only serving them mm -hmm. because they don't have they can't do anything against them. Because at some point, if they feel like if if they have to stay in power, they have to attack wherever they, they they have to attack, they would do it because yep. they're just power hungry. Mm -hmm. You know, but they still support them knowing that, you know, they're not only going to destroy their own kind, but they're going to destroy like even like other countries, like, you know, whatever mm -hmm. they could destroy. It's like, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the These puppets of, you know, Western powers, mm -hmm. They will do anything for their masters. Yeah. And that's why you have um, this classic example. Mm -hmm. With 70, mm -hmm. the only neighboring country that he hasn't really ventured into is mm -hmm. Tanzania. Oh. Okay. Tanzania is a very powerful country. Mm -hmm. When you look at the rest of the countries that surround Uganda, mm -hmm. Uganda is landlocked. It, it doesn't touch the ocean. Yeah, just like Bukini. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone is that way too. Burundi, mm -hmm. Zimbabwe, Zambia, you know, a few mm -hmm. countries like that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Museveni has been involved in South Sudan, in mm -hmm. Sudan and then South Sudan. Mm -hmm. Even now, today, the atrocities and the war taking place in in Sudan, mm -hmm. in South Sudan. So yeah. he's involved. His troops are involved, mm -hmm. you know, and people are running away from South Sudan to Uganda mm -hmm. and he's acting like, you yeah. know, like he's taking care of refugees. Oh, okay. I mean, P and then there are people who say, well, you know, that's so great. They're, they're receiving refugees and mm -hmm. everything. You don't really have a choice when refugees run, mm -hmm. they just go to whatever, you know, what, wherever the gun, the gunshots, you yeah. know, are no, they yeah. no longer can hear those. That's yeah. where they go. They run away you know, from they those. They shoot. Yeah. From, yeah. Uh -huh. But where we're sitting right now, mm -hmm. if somebody shoots into this house, mm -hmm. we're running. Yeah. And it's not going to matter what direction. We're just going to yeah. run. Until you um, can't hear those shots. Yep. Yeah. So then he's also, he supported uh, basically the RP of Kagame mm -hmm. and the other soldiers, uh, especially the leading, the leaders mm -hmm. of the rebellion in Rwanda, mm -hmm. they were part of the Uganda military. When mm -hmm. Kagame came here in the U.S. in 1990 mm -hmm. to train at Fort Leavenworth, mm -hmm. he came as a Ugandan citizen. He I was part that. of the Ugandan military. Yeah. He was the chief intelligence of the Ugandan military. Yeah. And then he came here, then converted went into, you know, he became the rebel leader mm -hmm. and, you know, they won mm -hmm. in Rwanda and then invaded the Congo, him and Museveni. Mm 